Let us look at these concepts, the concept of Sukhayu and Hitayu uh, in light of the science of happiness. So, can you recall few concepts we discussed in the very first session? You might recall the concept of hedonism and eudaimonism. Eudaimonic uh, happiness, eudaimonic aspect of life, very popular in the Greek philosophy, also talks about Hitayu, the life of virtue. Aristotle also talks about these virtues, virtue as the foundation of ethics as well as foundation of happiness. And these thoughts are very well reflected in the notion of Hitayu. So, if Hitayu that is benevolent life and Sukhayu is the happy life, if benevolent life is happy life, does money feature somewhere in this equation? Certainly, money features, money is important that mean money here means all material possessions they are important, but they enhance the quality of life only when that money and material possession are directed and used for the larger purpose. If that is not directed money cannot enhance my happiness. So, ultimately what makes us happy and satisfied the life goal, social capital, altruistic behavior these things explain happiness more than money, achievement and power. And that is reflected in the Bruce Hedges research, that is reflected in the Duns research and many, many other research studies. And these are actually suggesting that the schema which was given in the yogic tradition of Sukhayu and Hitayu fits very well with the contemporary knowledge system. Let us look at how these factors then are connected to career success. So, first look at the Tattvava Bodh. This course is also about managing career. How these four factors which are related to the satisfaction, happiness in life, they are connected to and are they relevant for the career? Let us look at first thing Tattvava Bodh. Knowing a subject knowing about the essence of the matter, that is the worldly meaning of the Tattvavabodh. If we look at the job performance, it is dependent on three factors, declarative knowledge, procedural knowledge and motivation. Declarative knowledge is the core competency, core technical knowledge. If I am a, a software coding person, professional, I need to know the coding. If I am an advocate, I need to know the law. If I am a, uh, a scientist, I need to know the science, I need to know the theory and ways of experimenting. That is the declarative knowledge. But there is also something called procedural knowledge. I might be very good at experimentation, I might be very good at law, I might be very good at whatever uh, the job, maybe design, job of designing, job of recording, job of uh, software uh, development, I might be good at that. But in the organization, just knowing my craft is not sufficient. I need to have the procedural knowledge. What is the meaning of procedural knowledge? Procedural knowledge meaning my knowledge about how to pursue an idea or how to pursue an objective within the organizational setting. In all organizations, there are certain hierarchies organization structure, there is certain type of culture, there are systems and processes. Whatever I wish to accomplish in my job, it will not get automatically implemented. I need to know the procedure through which I can accomplish thing. I might be having some great idea, but if I know how to pursue this idea, how to put forth this idea, how to uh, uh, shape up this idea in connection with my departmental authorities or in connection with the organizational process and system, I will not be able to implement that idea. So, procedural knowledge is important. Tattvava both talks about both, knowing the essence of a thing. Second aspect, Indriya Jaya. To understand Indriya Jaya, I would like to quote the work of Brooke and Ghoshal. Uh, 
Dr. late Professor Sumanta Ghoshal, the great management thinker India has produced uh, is, 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 is co-author in this project. They looked at most effective and they studied many thousands of the managers in some of the very well known organizations. So, these organizations were like Jet Airways and uh, Boeing's and uh, many other very reputed organizations. They studied, Brooke was perhaps his PhD student, they studied hundreds of managers and what they found that all managers are not effic equally efficient. We all know different people operate at different level of effectiveness. What they identified that effectiveness of the managers can be understood by placing them on the two continuum, on the two by two matrix. If we put energy in one continuum and focus on another continuum, energy meaning how much uh, vitality with which I pursue a task and uh, focus that means, how long I remain connected and at work at a problem. So, focus and energy seems to be the defining features of the most effective manager. So, people might be looking very busy, but they might not be focused, they might not be giving enough energy, they might not be uh, working with the full intensity. So, that is why the title of their article is also interesting. The title is Beware of Busy Manager. So, busy manager is not necessarily more effective or competent manager. So, what makes people effective and competent at work? That is energy and focus. Those who have high energy and high focus they are called purposeful manager and they are the most effective manager and they are in short supply. In their study, they found that there are only 10 percent managers at workplace who can be called purposeful manager. Others and large number of that are distracted managers, those who have high energy, but they do not have good focus. There are 20 percent who are disengaged, who remain at task, but they do not uh, give sufficient intensity, they do not take that work, they carry out their work with the sufficient intensity. So, they are called disengaged manager and there are people who uh, keep uh, complaining about things, those are generally low on energy as well as focus, that is also a big chunk, 30 percent in their study were found to be procrastinating managers. how it is connected to Indriya Without controlling on the senses and Manas is also considered as Indriya. Without control of Mana and other senses, we cannot remain focused at work. Energy focus matrix reflects the importance of Indriya Jaya. Third aspect is Dharmya Kriya or Dharma Kriya ethics, values, fairness, integrity. These are some of the most important values to remain in job and to grow in the job. In some organizations, people might be having little comparatively lower competency on their professional uh, dispositions. The, the professional proficiency might be little lower but that person can be promoted if the person is high on ethics, values, fairness and integrity and managers who are might be otherwise little higher on the proficiency, professional uh, acumen, but if they are not right, if they are not operating at the higher level of ethics, values, fairness and integrity, they are not promoted. And that is why in large number of organizations along with the uh, professional work, there is an assessment of the things which we can easily club into dharmya kriya. So, I might be doing business, I might be doing my technical work, but if I am not doing it ethically, if I do not follow the organization's values, if I am not fair with my uh, 
colleagues and my team members and if I do not operate with the integrity, there are less chances, very bleak chances that I can grow in the profession. I may grow in the short run, but in the long run these things get exposed and there are hundreds of studies suggesting that professional career success is deeply connected to all these four aspects. The fourth aspect is Sukhayu Hitayu, means happy life is the benevolent life or benevolent life can be the happy life. We can here discuss only one construct that is called organization citizenship behavior. My willingness to take extra mile, my willingness to walk extra mile to fulfill organizational objectives and my willingness to help my colleagues going out of my regular job description. That is found to be one of the distinguishing features of likability of the people, trustworthiness of the people, innovation by the people. Those who are able to, those who are willing to go extra mile are able to get more insight about their work and they are found to be more innovative. So, many, many positive organizational outcomes are connected, they are associated with the organization citizenship behavior, which says that hit doing good for others for not want of immediate return is one of the things which makes person effective and successful in his career. Tvabodh, Indriya Jaya, Dharma Kriya, Sukhayu and Hitayu, those factors were identified many years ago, perhaps many uh, centuries ago. The modern uh, organizational behavior science is validating these aspects and suggesting that these are still important and they are going to remain important in the career as well. So, now look at how yoga completes the positive psychology in light of the definition or in light of the ways of well-being what we discussed in this session. One of the things we observe in the positive psychology literature is that we are having some findings here and there about aspects which are related to it. But yoga gives a complete holistic perspective. Still in the positive psychology, we do not have well developed constructs which capture the essence of tattva bodh, but that is the foundation. The foundational element of happiness is knowing, it is captured to some extent in the cognitive behavior therapy, but it is not well connected with the other aspects of the positive psychology. So, yoga and Ayurvedic perspective provides a holistic way of approaching life and approaching career. Yoga also provides physio psychological, ethico moral and psycho spiritual understanding and experience. Yoga by definition is experiential pursuit. So, whereas psychology most of the interventions are limited to manomaya kosh, they are limited to the emotional self, they are to some extent related to some aspects of the vijnanamaya kosh, but mostly they are focused on manomaya kosh. However, we have looked at in the previous sessions that we are not only our mind, emotions and cognition our self is also physical self, our self is also vital self. We do not have interventions in positive psychology on the physical self, vital self or it does not have the interventions at the higher aspects of the cognition, higher aspects of the Vijnanamaya Kosh. Yoga provides intervention for all these aspects, that is why yoga can complete the positive psychology. Yam Niyam are the ways of attaining Indriya Jaya, Dharmaya Kriya, Sukhayu, Hitayu, these are very well captured in the yoga as well. Yoga actually leads to Tattva Bodh, that is a different level of knowing, that is embodied knowing, that is knowing which is not only related to the concept at the conceptual level, 
that is not only related to the conscious knowing, it is also deeply connected to the deeper aspect of knowing which are embodied in nature that is called interoception. So, the yoga provides building our in, uh, enhancing our interoception and that is connected to lot many other aspects which are important for success in life and success in career. So, in a nutshell yoga provides a holistic method and approach to attain all three aspects of well being that is hedonistic well being, eudaimonic well being and transcendental well being which is the unique feature of the Indian understanding, yogic understanding of happiness.